Hello and welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. Kay Murray here in the studio, joined by Ali Moreno and Stevie Nicol as well. And we continue with our focus on the Champions League final, which we are now just one day away from. And today, the big topic is Sadio Mane's future. Yesterday, Mohamed Salah, this time Sadio Mane, though, it has to be said, his quote about it was a little different to his teammates. He said, honestly, the answer I can give you now is I feel very good and I'm fully focused on Saturday's game. That's the answer I must give before the final. But come back to me on Saturday and I will give you the best answer you want to hear, for uh, sure. Oh, OK. It's special. I will oh. give you all what you want to hear then. Oh, OK, thank there's you. There's been rumours of thank you, him possibly going to buy and even Carlo Ancelotti's had to answer of whether Real Madrid could be a destination for him. Anyway, Jurgen Klopp himself said, the Bayern Munich rumours, I couldn't care less at the moment. He's completely focused on the game. It's not the first time in my career Bayern Munich rumours are coming up before decisive matches. Wherever Sadio plays his football next season, he will be a big player. Well, we're going to get some reaction to this from Paris. He's Alexis Nunes and the crew with their thoughts on what we've seen. Yeah, thanks, Kay. And we've switched scenes because this is the place to be. The Stade de France in less than 24 hours now. We're going to have the Champions League final. The game will be underway. We've got Jules joining me as well as Augie. Plenty to talk about, guys. Very busy day. But one thing I definitely did not expect to talk about when we woke up this morning was the rumors linking Sadio Mane, of all people, on the eve of the Champions League final to Bayern Munich. Augie, what did you make of these? Well, we know that Sadio Mane's contract expires in 12 months and I don't think he's really happy that all the focus has been on Mo Salah's contract, which expires in 12 months. Men and their egos. Well, <laughs> so the, the Bayern Munich link has been there for maybe three or four weeks now and it's not going away. I'd be surprised if he went to Bayern Munich because I think he's 29. He's not the sort of Bayern Munich signing that we're used to. It wouldn't be a direct replacement for Robert Lewandowski. But Mane wants some sort of a bit of love, I guess, from Liverpool to say, look, I'm, I'm as important as Mo Salah. And if Salah gets a new contract, a big contract, which he may not want to sign, Sadio Mane wants the same sort of, you know, love and affection. So I think it might drag on. But the, the way he's been speaking, Sadio Mane, suggests that he's going to make a big announcement after the final. And I don't think that's him saying, I'm staying, because it's you, tell, you said that before the game, surely. Jules, what do you make of it? Um, do you agree with Augie? Yeah, completely. And I think all the, not just all the talk of him about Mo Salah, but even between the club, and Mo Salah and his agent. There's been nothing for, for Mane, not the start of a negotiation, not even a discussion. And I think if you're, if you're Mane, you feel, maybe hurt is too hard, but you feel like, okay, a bit left out. Why is it just on Salah? And I think Mane knows very well that if they give the bumper contract to Salah, the new one, around 400,000 a week, there's not enough money, I think, in the wage bill to give that to another player. So it's either him or Salah who would get the big extension. And if you're him, his agent is German, he knows Bayern Munich very well. Bayern Munich have Serge Gnabry, who is also with one year left on his contract. Yep. There's a problem there. He could come in and replace Serge Gnabry. Okay, what do you make of the timing, though, of these numerous, uh, the rumours and the fact that nobody's really rubbishing them either, especially on the eve of, like, as I said, the Champions League final? Could this be an, a distraction in any way? It's not great timing. I think you compare his reaction to Mo Salah's. Mo Salah's asked the same question on, on Wednesday, and he said, my contract is not an issue at the moment, but I will be here next season. He, he be, so that killed that one for now obviously it's a big issue in 12 months time but he killed it Sadio Mane went the other way he wouldn't talk about his contracts and he left it hanging he was always teasing people by saying I will explain after the Champions League final now if he was going to stay surely he'd say look I'm staying guys don't worry about it we'll get the game out of the way but he said I'll tell you after the final which suggests to me that he wants to go Jules are you feeling that vibe too yeah, and I can understand. He's had a great season. He feels a bit left out. Maybe it's the right time for him to go and maybe it's the right time for Liverpool to get a bit of money for him. I don't know how much with one year left on his contract, getting soon 30 as well, but they will get some money. All right, well, I guess we'll put that to bed for now because we have to concentrate on the big one, the Champions League final. Like I said, coming up in less than 24 hours, Augie went to Liverpool's training because we had to get some answers. There's some injury concerns going into this one in regards to Fabinho as well as Thiago Alcantara. Some people probably saying, how do Liverpool go on without Thiago Alcantara? He has been absolutely brilliant for him. What did you see? Well, Thiago trained, Fabinho trained, and Virgil van Dijk trained. Virgil van Dijk hasn't played for, I think, two weeks as well. It wasn't the most intense training session, it, but they looked fine. There was no issue. There was no, there was no sprinting session anyway, but they, they looked fine. They looked like they were engaged. One thing I did notice when Real Madrid trained later on, theirs was much more intense, much more like small-sided games, much more pressing, much more attacking. So 
maybe there's something in that. Maybe Klopp wanted to keep it back a little bit. But but Thiago looked fine and Fabinho looked fine too. So how do you see them lining up? Do you start both of them then? I think they will start both. I think it'll be the midfield of Henderson, Thiago and Fabinho. And if Thiago can't make it, maybe Naby Keita. But I do think Klopp wants Thiago to start. He needs Thiago to start. Liverpool need to keep the ball. And without Thiago, they can't keep the ball and move the ball as well as they need to. Because obviously Luka Modric and Toni Kroos can, can do to them what Thiago can do to Real Madrid. Jules, do you agree? Because I know you're not the biggest fan of <laughs> Henderson starting there, so what do you think? <laughs> not for me. I would have Naby Keita ahead of Henderson. Maybe Ogi is right. Maybe Klopp would go with Henderson because of the experience. Of, of course, he was there when he played a key part when they won it. And because of the legs and the energy that he brings. I think in a game like this, against this kind of Real Madrid team, you need more than just that. And that's why I think Keita, even with his ability to counter-press, would be very, very interesting in a game like this especially if Thiago is not fully fit and Keita can take off a little bit of the pressure with the ball that Thiago will have because Liverpool will be right along him. All right, well, we wanted to send Jules to Real Madrid's training, but he was too busy being a <laughs> VIP at Roland Garros, so he didn't get to go. Thankfully, Augie did. But Jules, how do you see Real Madrid uh, lining up? And I suppose the main question is who gets the privilege to pay up, play up front with yeah. Vinny Jr. and Karim the Dream. I know you love to call Karim him that. The Karim the Dream. The dream. <laughs> uh, I think it would be Valverde. Yeah. There's no reason for Carlo Ancelotti to change anything in the sense that the teams that played with Valverde before worked well. Then you can bring on Rodrigo, you can bring on Camavinga, no problem. But you will start with Cruz, Casemiro and Modric, with Benzema, Vinicius and Valverde, who gives you something different because when you don't have the ball, it's almost a 4-4-2 and it comes a bit deeper in midfield. The back four, there was question mark over Alaba. He trained very, very nicely. He had no problems at all in the little 10v10, 11 that, v 11 that they did. So Alaba will be there with Militao, Carvajal and Mendy. Augie, is that what you see? I think so. I think Real, you know, Ancelotti just trusts the players who deliver for him, doesn't he? And he's not a guy that will make a lot of changes. This isn't a Pep Guardiola situation where Ancelotti will go to bed tonight overthinking. Carlo will be very calm. He'll have picked his yeah. team days ago and just trust his guys. That's what he does. He trusts his players to deliver. And I think Carlo said, you know, you're the guys that got us here. Do it again. The Mr. Carletto, ever the calm head, isn't he? All right, well, before we get you guys' predictions, Jules. Who do the people of Paris want to see win this one? I know they've recently had a, a too close for comfort relationship with Real Madrid, yeah. but that obviously ended up in PSG's favour. But who would they want to see win this? I think it's still Real Madrid because of Karim Benzema, of course. Even yeah. if at times he had a, a difficult relationship with the French public. Yeah. Now they, they kind of have reconnected since he joined back the national team. And also there's Ferlon Mendy, who grew up a few kilometres behind the stadium here, who at some point didn't think he would have a career in yeah. football because of a really bad injury. For him to have made it the way he did and to be here tomorrow with all his family, I think he's got 25 or 26 tickets or something crazy. <laughs> Everybody will come from the Mendy camp. It, it's quite special. So I, I think as much as they like Liverpool as well in Paris, I think Real Madrid will, will slightly have the edge. All right, Argy, prediction. I think that this game boils down to who wins the battle between Trent Alexander-Arnold and Vinicius Jr. Because we, we know that Trent is very good going forward, but he can leave a lot of gaps at the back. With, with Vinicius, I think, you know, we saw it against Man City and Kyle Walker. I think he is the, he is the big, big weapon for, for Real Madrid. So it boils down to that, and I think that, I think that Real will just shade this one. They have been just getting by in some really tight matches nah. so far this season. Jules, do they get your nod as well? Yeah, I think so. I said 1-1 one, one, uh, at the end and we'll have a bit of extra time. And then Kareem the Dream, <laughs> I was going to say, Jules just wants to go to the after party. <laughs> oh the my God, win. bring on the party after the win. Bring on the party. We hope we get an invite to that party too, <laughs> K, because these two now are going for Real Madrid to win the Champions League final in less than 24 hours. Back to you guys. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.